Now let's talk about creating your own podcast, some tips for you if you'd like to create a podcast. Now, like I said before, a podcasting is really a business in and of itself. It's a business model. It's not just a way that you can kind of drive traffic to like a website. If you have a, you know, a business with a website, uh, it's a whole business of itself. So with that being said, you have to take this module with a grain of salt because podcasting is such a deep topic for all the technical things that are involved with kind of preparing our assess feeds and getting uh, episodes uploaded, types of things like that. And I'm not going to cover that in this module, but I will link to resources for you. Uh, some great kind of free courses out there and some other free resources uh, for you to investigate and learn more about the technical side of podcasting, as well as other marketing tips from podcasters themselves uh, that are making good money with podcasting that are sharing some things. Um, but again, if you're going to consider creating a podcast, you know, so here's some different things for you to keep in mind. So the name of your podcast is critical. So it can be the a catchy brand that matches like your business. Like for us, we're actually consider rolling out, uh, and depending on when you you're actually watching this video, it may already be live, but we're going to roll out like the traffic secrets podcast. That's what we're thinking about developing, uh, internally within the company. And, um, so as you can see there, that just is an extension of, you know, our brand. Um, and so, but however, you know, our brand actually has a keyword that, that keyword traffic. And so that, that will help us with optimization, with, you know, helping people find certain things when they search for podcasts and other things we're going to talk about, like how to get ranked in the iTunes directory, which I'll cover, uh, coming up here in a lesson, but the name of your podcast is critical. So you either want to have it as a continuation of your brand and hopefully your brand at least kind of has some kind of descriptive part of it where people see the brand, they kind of know what it's related to, hopefully. Um, and or your podcast can be just a benefit-driven title. So if you have a brand that's very obscure, like the Warren Group or, you know, or something like that, and let's say you deal with, you know, financing or, you know, uh, helping people plan, like, living trusts or wills or investments, things like that, then you probably don't want to use Warren Group podcast or anything like that. I would suggest then you go the other way and you do a benefit-driven uh, title podcast, more like, you know, smart investing for, to, you know, whatever, today's, today's smart investor or, um, you know, proper proper trusts and w w wills or, you know, just something that's descriptive, like keyword driven uh, and benefit driven for your market. So you want to use an intriguing graphic or logo to represent it. Uh, I'll show you here. We'll, we'll jump into the iTunes podcast and poke around a little bit and you'll see a lot of the podcasts that are ranked high that do very well. They have, you know, kind of a nice logo, nice graphic that brands and represents the podcast ex itself. So people see it and, it and they kind of they just remember it. It gets that mind share with the market there. They remember seeing that graphic and they know that it's that podcast, you know, that they've watched and of course, hopefully like to watch or listen to that is. Uh, so you want to use a good graphic logo to represent yours, you know, if you set one up. Now you can repurpose existing content to create episodes. I've seen this a lot. Like this is the kind of, I call it like the poor man's way to create a podcast. You don't actually have to produce a podcast show and go through all that stuff. You could take existing content they already have, some video lessons on some topic for your market, you know, or audio clips or interviews or anything that you already have. And you could set up a podcast for your business and just start dripping some of those pre-recorded things that you already have, those assets you already own as episodes. So I've seen other people do this uh, and, and, and they, they do it and they can drive traffic from it. So if you have a bunch of, let's say, existing YouTube videos on a certain subject, you could turn that into the whatever podcast about that subject and just, you know, release those uh, videos as episodes. And you could maybe do a little editing on the front and, and, you know, add like your such and something, something podcast, like uh, kind of an opening screen. And then you could just say in this, in this episode of the whatever, po you know, of the real estate flipping podcast, I'm going to walk you through the best way to use the MLS to find possible uh, houses for you to buy. And this is how to find good opportunities. I'm just giving these examples off the top of my head. And then, so then you just lead into the same video you have on YouTube, that same content and it just plays like whatever that content was. And then you could put a bumper on the end of that video where you can say, hey, if you enjoyed this episode of the whatever podcast, please subscribe, check out our other episodes, 
And if you want a guide on the 12 best tips on how to make money in 2016 flipping real estate, go to this URL and download our free guide. There you go. That's all you need to do. So it's very easy to repurpose existing content to create podcast episodes. This is the best thing because I, I get a lot of uh, students that I've talked with clients when I bring up podcasting and if it's something for their business or not. Maybe they'll have a mainstream market business where it would be good for them, but they're like, you know what? I don't have time to do a podcast and manage it and deal with it and all that stuff. Well, you can actually pay someone to do anything in your business. So you could pay someone to run and manage it for you. Uh, I'll talk about interviews in this module and you could actually get someone else to be the interviewer. You don't have to be the interviewer. So don't just think if you don't have time in your business for something uh, that it's not cost effective for you just to pay someone else to do it. If you already have an employee or a tech support person or a support person or someone else that's uh, involved in your business that you do pay money to, maybe they have free time and maybe one of the things they could do is kind of manage the uh, podcast for you, at least just taking old content you already have and repurposing it and uploading it and they can manage the whole process and you don't have to do anything and you're getting more traffic, more leads and hopefully more customers and more money for your business. Now you can pre-record a year's worth of episodes if you want. Like uh, when I talk about interviews, you could do like 12 interviews in your market, in your market, your industry, and then you just drip them out one per month uh, as an episode. And by the way, you can use, you can reverse this too. You can use content that you're creating for a podcast. You can repurpose it in other ways, right? So if you were doing like a video podcast, which I'll talk about video in a little bit and how it ranks higher in iTunes, how it has more value, which obviously makes sense. You know, a lot of people would rather watch something than just listen. Um, but if you were doing videos, let's say for a video podcast, you could take the content of it or good parts of it and turn it into a YouTube video. And now you have something to put on YouTube and then you can embed the YouTube video uh, in a blog post. And now you, you have a double purpose for that. You could post the video, uh, upload it to Facebook. So there's a lot of different ways to use the same type of content, especially video um, or, and, or audio recordings too, but especially video. So once you make it, you can do it both ways. You can reuse it in different ways, or you can find stuff you already have to use as a podcast. Now, a suggestion, just like I would suggest you to do with anything in marketing, which is the secret to making money, don't reinvent the wheel. Look and see what people are already doing, where the money's already flowing, what people are already doing successfully, and just kind of join and do it too. It's no surprise here. Uh, observe other top podcasts, podcasters, and see what they have in common. See how they're doing it because they've tested stuff already. You know, they've spent hours of their time as well as money trying to figure things out. So look at some of them and model them, uh, you know, emulate success and you'll shortcut your own success. So that's definitely something uh, that you want to do. Now, you want to create an account if you get involved with this. And again, I'm going to link you to some resources that will help you do figure out more things on how to get involved in all this if you want to do a podcast. But one of the most popular podcasting kind of hosts for the files is called Libsyn at Libsyn.com. Uh, there's PodTrack and FeedBurner for being able to track like RSS feeds to kind of push out the episodes to people. Uh, you can check that out. Um, you can do, podca uh, do interviews with other podcast owners to cross-promote each other. You know, if you want to get more subscribers or downloads for a podcast, what better way than to try to tap into a pre-existing audience of people already downloading, listening to podcasts, but from someone else. It's harder to do that in the very, very beginning, but once you get any kind of traction at all, uh, you can leverage that success and traffic into more traffic. Now, you'll want to create a short URL that redirects to your longer iTunes URL, not only for your podcast, like the main URL to your podcast, but also each episode you'll have a different URL. You'll want to create like a short URL, short version to it. Uh, because otherwise people will try to remember, you know, oh, what was, the, how do I get to the, the podcast page or to that one episode I like? And they won't be able to remember the long YouTube URL. And last but not least, if you're serious about creating your own podcast, check out freepodcastcourse.com. You have to opt in for it, but there's some great tips and info uh, and information on, on setting up a podcast. It's actually, this course is actually uh, produced by uh, John Lee Dumas. I think that's how you pronounce his, his name. He has the popular uh, Entrepreneur on Fire podcast. And I believe he's making a lot of money from his podcast. And it's very popular and he has millions of downloads and lots of subscribers. And he's one of the few that's really doing it powerfully and doing it right. So he's one that would be great to model and look at what he's doing. Uh, but he's definitely got the podcast game figured out. And if you go to that site, 
Uh, he has an opt-in for more information and tips that he shares on, on how to set up your own podcast. So I recommend that you do that.